So this video is all about the rock cycle and there are a lot of different versions of the rock cycle. This just happens to be the version that I like the best. Um, the rock cycle involves the three different types of rocks. So as you can see in this graphic, we have our igneous rocks here. And when I think of igneous rocks, I typically think of rocks that come from a molten. And uh, molten can be either magma or lava. So uh, when you see lava pouring out over the ground, uh, we, we would refer to that as being a lava extrusion. Uh, when molten is down inside the ground, it takes on a new name called magma. And earlier in the course, we referred to that as magma intrusion. And so typically, it's okay to think of igneous rocks as rocks that come from molten. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that are made from sediment. And typically, when we think of sedimentary rocks, we think of rocks that uh, exhibit or show layers. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have been changed. So they were another type of rock that got changed into a metamorphic rock. So they're the three categories of rocks that you probably would have heard about before Earth Systems 3209. Now, in terms of the rock cycle, we'll try to keep it as, as simple as we can, but um, we'll start out and we'll say that all three types of rocks can be weathered and eroded. So it is possible to take a sedimentary rock and to weather and erode it. It's also possible to take an igneous rock and to weather and erode it, and a metamorphic rock and to weather and erode it. So you can see the three green arrows that, um, that symbolize weathering and erosion. And any time you take any type of rock and you weather it, you grind it up into little tiny pieces. That's what weathering means, and erosion is to take that sediment and to move it. So um, all rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary, can get weathered and eroded and can produce this um, material which we call sediment. Now sediment can be different sizes, it can be uh, well sorted or poorly sorted. Uh, we're not going to worry about that now. We just want to, for the purpose of the rock cycle, to keep it nice and general. So if you have that sediment, and you want to turn that sediment into a sedimentary rock, the process that's really important to know is a process that's called lithification. Okay? And lithification is not on this particular diagram. However, if we were looking right here, we would see two words called compaction and cementation. They're two sub-processes of the process called lithification. So in order to lithify something, you're taking it and you're turning it to stone. So what you would have to do, you would have to take that sediment, you would have to compact that sediment, and then you would have to cement the sediment grains together, thereby forming a rock. So, so far what we've done is we've realized that all three types of rocks can be weathered and eroded to produce sediment, and sediment can be lithified into a sedimentary rock via two processes called compaction and cementation. Now, next we'll move on and we'll look at these uh, yellowish um, type arrows and so you can take all three types of rock and you can metamorphose it so if you were to take an igneous rock for example granite and you want it to subject it to heat pressure and hot chemical fluids you could turn it into a metamorphic rock similarly you could take a sedimentary rock you could expose it to heat pressure and hot chemical fluids and you could turn it into a metamorphic rock now please note that here heat and pressure is indicated hot chemical fluids are not indicated and it's really important that hot chemical fluids um, is always said when you say heat and pressure uh, the hot chemical fluids provides the mechanism for how the rocks actually get changed so it's very important that you not leave that out also there should have been an arrow here in this particular diagram that said that you can take a metamorphic rock and you can subject it to heat pressure and hot chemical fluids and you can get another metamorphic rock I typically say you can take a steak and you can cook it, but you can cook that steak even further and further and further and further. So you can have a low-grade metamorphic rock, and you can subject it to heat pressure and hot chemical fluids, and you could have a medium-grade uh, metamorphic rock, or a high-grade metamorphic rock, or an extremely high-grade metamorphic rock. So the heat pressure and the hot chemical fluids was left out in terms of taking a metamorphic rock and metamorphosing it even further. Um, the only other thing that's not done is how do we form an igneous rock? Well, you can take a sedimentary rock and you can melt it. 
And so there's an arrow missing here and I'm going to take it and there it is. So you can take that sedimentary rock and you can melt it. You can take a metamorphic rock and you can melt it. You can take an igneous rock and you can melt it. But note, the minute you say the word melting, you are back to the level of molten. And so you're dealing with lava and magma, once again, that has the ability to cool and crystallize. And there's no way of avoiding it. You will get an igneous rock again. So the only time you can use the word melt is if you are looking to form another igneous rock. Um, as you can see, I scratched out the word uh, magma, and I wanted to put the word molten there because the molten could be lava, or the molten could also be um, magma. Okay. Also here you see cooling. Well, it's one thing for the molten to cool, but there's another process that's involved called crystallization, where the molten actually turns into crystals, which eventually uh, becomes solid rock. So that's my version of the rock cycle. Um, just always remember that each type of rock can become the other one. And remember the processes that are involved for changing from one type of rock to another type of rock.